Good morning, everyone, and thanks, Keith, for that introduction and to CIH uh, Scotland, because I'm really pleased to have the opportunity uh, to be here this morning. I think this is the third um, time I've spoken at the CIH Scottish Conference, uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to be back here, or shall I say, glad that you've allowed me back. Um, but 2014 has been an extraordinary year for Scotland and the world stage for sport and politics, and we need to build on that in 2015 by maintaining our energy and commitment in working towards creating a better Scotland. It was fantastic to see the first tenants moving into the former Athletes' Village recently, a great example of innovation in housing, producing a positive legacy for local communities. The referendum result didn't provide the answer that I wanted, but the levels of participation and engagement from communities across the length and breadth of Scotland was absolutely superb, and I'd like to say a bit more about that later. Today, I'd like to share with you three of my priorities for 2015, which I think might chime with what you've heard from Keith this morning. Firstly, housing is at the heart of this government's ambitions to create a fairer and more progressive country. Secondly, the importance of the people and communities that we're here to serve. And lastly, a look to the future, my ambitions for how we will use the new welfare powers. And turning to the first priority, housing has and will always have a crucial role to play in how this Scottish Government tackles poverty and inequality. Our programme for government has outlined how improving the social health, environmental and economic opportunities for all of Scotland is vital to improving Scotland's long-term economic performance. And as the Scottish economy continues to recover and strengthen, it's important that, it's important that growth helps reduce inequalities and allows everyone to realise their potential in a way that's both sustainable and promotes resilience. We all have a critical role to play in meeting the basic human need of having somewhere safe, warm and affordable to live. And there are some positive signs that the supply, quality, accessibility and choice of housing in Scotland is improving. Through our partners, over 24,000 affordable homes have already been delivered, which is 80% of the way towards our 30,000 affordable homes target and nearly 70% of these are for social rent. And we have legislated to preserve Scotland's social housing stock by abolishing the right to buy, which will protect 15,500 social homes from sale. There is, however, no room for complacency, and our ambition for Scotland and its housing remains high. The existing 6,000 target per year is not the height of our ambition, but a baseline that we want to exceed. And our current target is backed by our 1.7 billion investment in affordable housing over the current parliamentary term. And despite cuts to the Scottish Government's capital budget, the affordable housing supply budget for 2015-16 will be £463 million, over £70 million more than originally planned. We're also being creative with the levers we have and we'll continue to develop innovative mechanisms to increase the supply of affordable housing through the use of loans, grants and equity investments. And I'm pleased to announce today that we will soon be investing a further £2 million in charitable bonds. And this investment will help to fund homes for social rent at Miller Hall in Midlothian. And this builds on the success of the Scottish Government's original £10 million charitable bond investment in 2013. And that was the first major investment of this type. And next financial year, we'll be investing a further £25 million in charitable bonds, which Alec Neil announced in December. And I'm delighted that these investments will be supporting the construction of up to 600 new affordable homes in communities across the country and helping to extend hard-pressed capital budgets. We are also helping the house building industry re recovery through initiatives like Help to Buy Scotland, which has now assisted over 4,300 households to buy new homes. 
and we're enhancing this with our help to buy Scotland's small developer scheme, which will help smaller building companies across Scotland develop new homes. And I am encouraged to see that total, total housing supply now growing in Scotland over the last year. It's testament to the hard work, dedication and commitment of you, Scotland's housing professionals. And I have confidence that working together, we can continue to boost housing supply in Scotland, which is a key priority for this government. But we're not just focused on supply. Improving the quality of existing housing and bringing an end to fuel poverty are also key priorities for this government. High energy prices are affecting too many families and communities across Scotland, especially in rural and remote parts. We want an end to the situation where families have to choose between heating their homes and paying for other essentials like food and clothes. That's why we've allocated over half a billion pounds since 2009 for our fuel poverty and energy efficiency programmes. Since 2008, nearly a third of all households have received energy efficiency measures. And this drive by the Scottish Government will continue and accelerate. To begin with, we will be increasing our investment on domestic energy efficiency, spending £94 million this year and £114 million next year. And we'll also benefit from powers under Smith. In future, the Scottish Parliament will have powers to determine how supplier obligations for energy efficiency and fuel poverty are designed and implemented in Scotland. And this will enable us to create schemes to fit Scotland's unique characteristics. We want improvements in the private sector too and intend to consult on proposals for minimum energy efficiency standards for private sector homes this spring. And I'm sure Thursday's session on standards in the private sector will pose some interesting questions for us to consider. We all know that the housing journey is changing for many families and individuals in Scotland. The private rented sector is now home to many more people who become longer term tenants. We published a strategy for the sector in May 2013, which aims to make it an attractive housing option, which provides good quality homes and high management standards. As part of that strategy, I established a stakeholder group which has recommended that the current assured and short assured tenancies should be replaced with a single private tenancy. And I accepted this recommendation and a consultation on a new tenancy for the private sector was launched in October to prepare for a bill in autumn 2015. We're currently analysing over 2,500 responses, but it's clear that stakeholders are asking for more detail. I will therefore undertake a short second public consultation about some key elements in the next few weeks, and I hope you'll all watch out for that. And let me turn now to the second priority I'd like to talk about today, the people and communities that we're here to serve. And one of the best parts of my job as a Scottish Government Minister is meeting people whose lives and ambitions are transformed by getting the keys to the warm, affordable home that meets their needs. And over the last year, I have seen firsthand the diverse range of solutions that we deliver together and what it means for those people and communities. And I was pleased to hear this week that new tenants will soon be moving into the Highland Council houses, houses that I visited when they were under construction last summer. And this is an example of much needed new housing in Dingwall, Rosshire. The project also included 10 mid-market rented homes constructed by the Highland Alliance. And I understand that the tenants for these homes moved in last week following strong local demand. And this is what's important. It's turning housing projects into homes. And it's also important to support the people who live in them who may have a variety of needs. And a project which stands out in my mind is Clydeford View Sheltered Housing Development in Cambus Lang, which has a vibrant and friendly atmosphere and is making a tangible difference to people's quality of lives. It's a great example of housing helping prevent needs for other more intensive public services and contributing to the integration of health and social care locally. Too often, people in need of care and support have been passed between one public service and another with scant regard for their needs as individuals. And that's simply not good enough. And this government is taking decisive action 
to ensure that health and social care services are more joined up. New health and social care partnerships will be created across, across Scotland over the next few months with responsibility for planning and commissioning joined up care using both health and social care budgets. The new arrangements will go fully live next year. As you well know, the need for person-centred services goes wider than the traditional health and social care services. As Housing Minister, I share your determination that people's housing needs should be given due attention and priority within an integrated approach to improving health and well-being. I believe that it will be easier than ever before for housing organisations to make the progress you want to see in this aspect of your work. And here are some of the things that the government has done to ensure this. We have defined the outcomes that the partnership should pursue, and this includes enabling people to live as far as reasonably practical, independently at home or in a homely setting in their community. The housing sector itself is guaranteed a voice in the engine room of the new partnerships. Each partnership has to create a strategic planning group and the legislation specifies that the social housing sector must be represented on those groups in each local authority area. And we have made it possible for homelessness and housing support services to be delegated to the new partnerships and fully integrated with the other functions where health and local authorities agree. The next 12 months will be crucial for putting effective arrangements in place and we all need to work together to grasp this opportunity. Councils and housing associations will be in the front line advocating the needs of our people and raising your own game in order to support the new partnerships as effectively as possible. And the joint improvement team will in turn support you helping to develop new approaches, overcome obstacles and share good practice. I will be taking a direct interest in this work and the government will work alongside you to ensure the processes are clear and that housing organisations know what is expected of them and how they can contribute. And we will seek early demonstrations of the benefits that can be made for individuals, which is what this is all about. Because Scotland's people are its greatest asset. And by giving communities the power to make their own choices, we can tackle poverty and address inequality in the most effective way. This government therefore places a strong emphasis on the community-led approach, building on the success of the existing People and Communities Fund, we are committing nearly £20 million to the new Empowering Communities Fund in 2015-16 to provide money directly to community groups to help them tackle poverty and inequalities in their own terms. This funding will be allocated to a variety of projects, including community groups that are promoting change in disadvantaged communities through training, employment, healthy eating and volunteering opportunities. And we recognise the pivotal role played by the housing sector in this and housing associations and other community anchor organisations such as community development trusts in supporting this approach. Following my speech this morning, I'm, going to, I'm delighted to be able to present completion certificates to three landlords and their tenants who have recently completed the Stepping Up to Scrutiny Training and Learning Programme, a programme which aims to empower tenants and give them the confidence to participate more widely in their communities. My third key message relates to the future. I think that everybody welcomes the additional powers coming to the Scottish Parliament. And I believe that what the Smith Commission has put forward in welfare will give us scope to look anew at the current system and how it can work better. On universal credit, we welcome the flexibilities that have been laid out, flexibilities around changing the frequency of payments and having the ability to pay landlords direct. They will go some way to ensuring that the introduction of universal credit in Scotland will be better suited to our needs. But underpinning all the powers coming to the Parliament is the need to get the details right. Our priority at the moment is to ensure that the legislative clauses that go forward meet the spirit of the Smith recommendations. The draft publication of the clauses is a start in this process, but there's still a lot of work to be done. However, I do believe a way can be found that allows both governments to work together to transform 
transfer these powers effectively and smoothly. And to that end, I'm pleased that the Joint Ministerial Working Group has now met and it will play an important role in the months ahead. In the meantime, I believe it's only right that we consult widely with those who will be affected by the new powers and take forward plans for our engagement with all of those with an interest. And I want to close this morning by just telling you how much I value our partnership with you and your organisations. I believe that working together is the best way to get results, and that's why we're working with you currently right across the housing sector to deliver a five-year joint delivery plan for housing in Scotland for publication in spring 2015. And work in this started in autumn 2014 through a series of roundtable discussions building up to our housing event on the 18th of November. And this work is not about replacing existing strategies, but refreshing how we deliver against them. The final plan is now nearing conclusion in conjunction with the Housing Policy Advisory Group. And with broadened membership, the group will have responsibility for the ac active delivery of the plan and for reporting to me on how prog and the progress going forward. I firmly believe that bringing together our collective expertise and skills and where possible resources we will be able to deliver more than the sum of our individual contributions. And I'd like to thank everyone in the sector for working with us to build consensus about the key priorities for delivery. Today has given me a welcome opportunity to express the importance the government attaches to housing and to social justice and the key role we all play in helping to deliver that vision for a fairer, more equal Scotland, where opportunities are plentiful and for all voices to be heard. And I'd like to finish by quoting um, US Senator Elizabeth Warren, a strong consumer advocate, who I think spoke a lot of sense when she said, and that's how we build the economy of the future, an economy with more jobs and less debt. We do it in fairness. We grow it with opportunity and we build it together. Thank you, and I wish you a successful conference.